Hey everyone, welcome to All Techies. I'm Pankaj Rai and in today's video, I'm going to talk about how can you get started with remote config. Well, have you ever thought of changing the app appearance or behavior without pushing another update on Play Store or App Store? Well, now with remote config, you can achieve the same. The best part is that remote config is available for Android, iOS and web. Now on all three platform, if you want to control certain features, you can easily do using remote config. So let's get started and see how can we integrate this to our Android app. So for that, let's switch to the Firebase website and uh, head over to the documentation where we are interested in remote config. So let's click on remote config. And here on this page, you will get every information related to remote config. All the platforms that it supports iOS, Android, Web, Flutter, C++, Unity, Backend API, for everything, you'll get the documentation at this place itself. Also, it's a plug and play API. That means without taking much effort at the dev side, you can easily integrate to the respective platform. So let's click on get started and check out for the dependency that we need to add to our Android app. So here Android is selected. Now if I scroll down then I can see that I'll need this dependency. Well one thing which you might be observing here is that it doesn't have the version defined. Well that's because of Firebase bomb. I have explained this in my previous video where I have talked about how can you get started with Firebase. If you haven't seen that video, then I would strongly recommend that please check out that video because through that you'll understand about how to create project on Firebase, how to add app on the Firebase project and how to integrate Firebase service to your Android app. Well, for now I'll just need this service so let me copy this and head over to Android Studio. Now let's head over to build.gradle and paste the dependency here. Well, as I said before too, just this is not going to be sufficient because you need to link the Android app to Firebase and also add the JSON file to the app directory. Here you can see that in the app directory I have the Google service.json. This is extremely important. So now let me switch back to the main activity. Here let's create the remote config object. Let me say this as m remote config. I'll initialize it with firebase remote config dot get instance. Also now the next thing is firebase remote config is not a backend database where based on the need you interact with backend, update the value and fetch it as and when required. Remote config is different. Unlike the backend database where it's just responsible of updating, storing and providing value back at the client side, here you maintain a local copy too. That means with remote config, all the values which you want to update using the remote config API or Firebase console, those key and value pair are actually stored locally at app site too. That means in absence of the service, the values are fetched locally. And when a new value got updated on the console, it fetch that value and update it to the locally stored values. You can correlate this with shared preference. Say for example, you have a shared preference. 
and with shared preference you can have a persistent storage enabled where you can store the key and a value pair where based on the key you either read the value or update value in a similar sense here too with remote config you maintain the local copy and using the value which you update on the console or through the api that is fetched using the remote config sdk and automatically updated with respect to the keys which are specified that means it's a way where you can update the value without touching the local code base and as i said this is different from ordinary database where you reach out update or read value based on request here it's doing much more than that so there should be a restriction applied to this too and the restriction is how often should you try to fetch the value if you have a very small amount of value with this that means say within 1 hour it is trying to update value 10 times 20 times 30 times then you will end up with throttling exception because this is not created to work like any ordinary database it's designed to act in a different way so how can we deal with this well let's check that out so we have the remote config object now let's create the setting object let me name this as config settings now firebase remote config settings dot builder dot set minimum fetch interval in seconds that's the place where you specify how often it should try to fetch the latest value well if i say this as 3600 then it's actually a 3600 seconds which eventually means 1 hour so what should be the ideal value well the default is 12 hours and as i said if you have this as a very low value then you'll end up with throttling exception that means you might be updating the values on the console but your users may not receive those values because every time it ends up with throttling exception so the ideal value for this depends on your use case say for example if you want to change theme of your app so if you don't want this value to get often updated and that should be the case even you do not want to have a different experience to your user all the time let them settle down with your app appearance and behavior too so have this value as quite longer value as possible say 4 hours 6 hours 12 hours and that's something which is a sort of ideal value for this okay now with remote config object let's set this config setting so here we are done with three major step creation of object creation of the setting object and setting that setting object back to the remote config well as i have also mentioned that we maintain the local key and a value pair too so where are those key value pairs so for that let's head over to resource directory xml and let's create a file here and let me name this as remote config default let's delete all these things and let me say this as default maps inside this will have entry each entry will have a key and a value pair so let's have a key as uh, show dark theme where i'll say the default value as false 
also if i want to restrict the minimum length for the password so let's have this to minimum password length and let me specify the default value as 12 so here are the two key value pair which i want to configure using remote config so we have this in the remote config default.xml so let's set this to this remote config object so we'll say set default async and we'll say r.xml.remote dot dot config default. So that's it. We are done now. So let's have a function. Let me say this as fetch and activate config. And here let me say this m remote config dot fetch and activate dot add on success listener add on failure listener so in case the value which is fetched from the remote config is successful then you will end up with add on success this returns a boolean object so you can say this as is successful here you may have an if condition where you can specify what should happen in case of success or failure also as i said it does have a potential to throw throttling exception so whenever you see throttling exception you'll get it at this place or in case of any other exception also that's the place where you will receive the exception. But there is one more method. This is fetch and activate. So the another method associated with this is just fetch. Fetch config values. Here let me say m remote config dot fetch dot add on success listener and add on failure listener so how do this is different from fetch and activate well fetch means that whatever is the updated value which you are going to fetch from remote config fetch those values and store it locally but do not give the updated value when a value is fetched using this remote config object so say for example if you are reading a value which we have specified here show dark theme so here with fetch what do we have mentioned is that update this value locally once it is fetched successfully but when i call a value using remote config then do not give the updated value and uh, this is true until and unless I explicitly call activate. So once I say activate, now I'll get the latest value, whatever is being fetched. So here it's a two step process. One is to fetch the value and the second one is to activate it. Now same is not true with fetch and activate. With fetch and activate, whenever it is successful, and if I try to call this value, then I'll get the updated value. And it's not just the fact that I'm adding to the on success listener. So here it's going to give me the updated value. In case I write it here too, still this is going to give me the old value. Until and unless this activate gets called on this object. So activate really plays a very important role here. Well, in most of the ideal situation, fetch and activate should do the work for you. Now, this next thing is how you can read these values. Is it only inside on success listener? Then no, you can read it outside on success too. You can read it at any place. 
Okay, so this was all about uh, setting this remote config at app side. Now let's head over to Firebase. Now click on console and uh, open the project which you have used to add your Android app. So here I had created this demo project and I've already linked my Android app. So I can head over to remote config. Now here let's create configuration provide the key value pair so I have this key so let's copy this key and provide the parameter name select the data type and set the default value that's it now let's add one more key so we'll click on add parameter we'll set the min password length this time the data type is number so let me have the default value as 12 itself now the one more added advantage that you get here is that you can also set for which set of value whatever value which you are going to update here should get uh, pushed to for example if you click on add new here you can set the conditional value you can create new condition and let me say this only for Android users. So I can select the platform which is only Android. Along with this you can also add multiple conditions too if you have any. Say for example along with Android if I'm targeting particular version of the app too then I can select version or the build number and specify the appropriate value here. So here let me click on create condition and value is say true. Now you can see this show dark theme for all users that's going to be the default value but only for Android user it's going to be the value true. So here you can see it's having multiple value and that's again based on the condition that we specify. Finally do not forget to click on publish changes. Once your changes are published once this piece of code gets executed and again based on this fetch time interval in seconds it will try to fetch these values. Well that's it for today's video where you have learned how can you add remote config service to your Android app. Along with this you have also seen how can you update the values through the Firebase console. Now in the next video we'll also talk about few other services of Firebase. But till then if you haven't subscribed this channel then please do hit the subscribe button and if you have liked this video, then do hit the like button too. Thank you and stay tuned.